Some doctors are saying that salt is healthy. And enough salt is essential for optimal health. But the American Heart Association guidelines suggest that we should be lowering salt intake, aiming for less than 1,500 milligrams of sodium intake per day for most adults. So who is right? Now, when thinking about salt intake, what's controversial is the sodium. And I want to start by saying that sodium is essential for life. It's needed to conduct nerve impulses, to contract and relax muscles, and maintain the proper balance of water and minerals. No sodium equals no life. That's not the part that's controversial. What's controversial is how much sodium we should consume. Most Americans consume around 3,400 milligrams of sodium every day. So what's the argument for increasing sodium intake? Well, there are numerous studies showing a U-shaped curve, where between 3 grams and 5 grams of sodium intake every day is associated with the lowest risk of heart disease, the so-called sweet spot, which is completely different to the American Heart Association guidelines. Plus, the people who say that we should be increasing our sodium intake, they will point to research suggesting that lower intakes of sodium will adversely affect insulin resistance and blood cholesterol levels, as well as increasing uric acid. Some people even say that if you're on the ketogenic diet, then you don't need to worry about sodium intake because the ketogenic diet protects our blood vessels already. And if you just looked at that research, it sounds like there are fantastic reasons to boost sodium intake. So what's the argument then to lower sodium intake? Well, we have excellent research showing that if we lower sodium intake, we lower blood pressure. And this evidence is from a recent Cochrane review that only included randomized controlled studies. And the grade of evidence was therefore considered to be high. The second piece of evidence is that we've got fantastic research showing that if we lower blood pressure, we lower the chance of cardiovascular disease and overall death rates. So the theory goes that if we lower sodium intake, we lower blood pressure and therefore lower cardiovascular disease and death rates. So that's the theory, but what does the research actually show? What happens in the clinical studies when they lower sodium intakes? Do we truly see lower cardiovascular disease? Because like I mentioned, there is controversy. When we have a look at a recent study that was published in the European Heart Journal, it concludes that moderate sodium intake between 2.3 and 4.6 grams per day has been consistently associated with lower cardiovascular risk, which is completely contradictory to what we would expect. So what's going on here? Well, it's important to remember that those analyses, they're based on observational data, as in simply observing the population and seeing what conclusions we can glean. But the problem with relying on that data is that there's many confounding factors that can skew the results. And that's exactly what seems to be happening here, where methodological issues may account for the inconsistent findings in currently available observational studies relating to sodium and cardiovascular disease. For example, there are issues with relying on single spot urine collections. It's also possible that those at higher risks of cardiovascular disease, they're told to lower their sodium intakes and therefore we see this reverse causation. So let me try and explain that again. Those people who are trying to restrict their sodium intakes, they're probably doing that because they're told by their doctors that they're at higher risk of cardiovascular disease. So it's going to skew the results because in the observational studies, those who are taking in less sodium, they're already at higher risk of cardiovascular disease. So that's what we're going to see in the research. And this is just one example when we're solely relying on observational studies. Instead, we should be relying on randomized controlled trials. So we know from those randomized controlled trials that if we lower sodium, we lower blood pressure. We also know from randomized controlled trials that if we lower blood pressure, we lower cardiovascular disease. So we strongly suspect that if we lower sodium, we will lower cardiovascular disease. And we absolutely should not get confused confused by these observational studies showing a U-shaped curve. Plus, one of the strongest pieces of evidence that we've got that lowering sodium intake will lower heart disease is this randomized controlled trial that was published in 2021. It involved over 20,000 people, and half of them took a salt substitute, and the other half they had normal table salt. Over an almost five-year period, they found that the group who were taking the salt substitute, they had lower rates of strokes, cardiovascular disease, and deaths. Overall then, for most people, it does make sense to try and lower their sodium intakes now I want to address the concerns about doing that strategy. But before I do, if you do want to accelerate your longevity journey and support the channel, please consider signing up to my Patreon page, where all members get early access to the videos, access to my 5 years younger online program that goes through the optimal diet, exercise, sleep and skincare routine. Plus, from the powerhouse support level and above, you get access to the Discord server where you can connect with me and other members as we
we discuss the latest longevity research. Proceeds go towards funding the rapamycin clinical trial. One of the concerns about lowering sodium intake is what effect will that have on blood cholesterol levels? Well, from a British medical journal, Systematic Review, they conclusively show that lower sodium intake has no adverse effects on blood cholesterol levels, hormones, or kidney function. And when it comes to concerns about uric acid, even thiazide-like diuretics, which are a class of blood pressure medication, this raises uric acid, but overall it still significantly reduces cardiovascular disease. So overall, when you look at the research, lowering sodium intake is a very safe strategy. As for the idea that the ketogenic diet protects against high sodium intake, we need evidence in the form of a human, randomized controlled trial, but at the moment we don't have that, so no one should rely on this theory. So if you do decide to lower your sodium intake, you might be concerned about taste of your food. But you needn't worry about this because your taste preferences, they can change, and this has been well studied. So if you can get through the first four to six weeks of lowering your sodium intake, your taste palette will change and you will adjust to the new norm. The final thing that I want to mention is that most sodium is found in processed foods, so my dietary advice is the same. We want to be eating whole foods, none of this processed rubbish, and ideally you want to be preparing the food at your home. Now I do appreciate that this is not an option for everyone, because many people are too busy to cook at home. If that's you, then I highly recommend that you check the sodium content in the foods that you're purchasing. If you've never done this before, I think you'll be shocked at the amount of sodium in the foods that you're purchasing. And now you can make make a more informed choice about what you're going to buy. And we don't need to worry about getting enough sodium because our body is extremely good at conserving the sodium that we need. So we've talked a lot about sodium in this video and we've briefly touched on cholesterol. So if you do want to explore cholesterol in a bit more detail, make sure to check out this next video here. A massive thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization, and to benefit from their ingredients as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.